Hey, how's it going? Don't talk to me. Ah, yes. Welcome to the cutthroat world of database design debate. And probably the biggest one we'll ever encounter is natural versus surrogate keys. And it's the versus thing I want to talk about in this video. But uh, to set the scene, besides little cuddly toys, it blows my mind how emotional people get when they're talking about this kind of discussion. In fact, I was uh, doing a video recently on the row ID, uh, unrelated to primary keys, but people were talking about identifying rows by row IDs, which led naturally to it being used as a key, and then people absolutely lost their mind. First thing that came in on Twitter when I broached the topic of row IDs was, here we go, Apex. Can't use Apex, why? Well, it doesn't support enough surrogate keys, it needs to use natural keys, people just absolutely going nuts over it. Of course, that's just fanning the flames and straight away you get a rebuttal, not just from people who are passionate about Apex, but people who are passionate about surrogate keys. You know, why would we have to use natural keys for Apex? Because the moment you have to update a natural key, then that's a disaster. Update Cascade, all these knocking problems, it's going to be a nightmare. And of course, the rebuttal comes, well, well, if you need to ever update a primary key, you should be burned at the stake because you got your database design wrong. And there's plenty of purists out there who say, you know, I've never ever once in my life had to update a primary key because I got the design absolutely bang on on day one. While I'm dubious of some of those claims, even if they were true, think about the amount of iterations an application goes through before a single line of code is written if you want to nut out every key in absolute perfection. I'd argue that you've probably burnt a lot of man hours really just doing nothing because you've never actually got on the stage of building your application and it ends up being just a great swag of missed opportunity if you spent two years getting your design just right and getting your customers to sign off on that and then telling them that, by the way, they'll never need to change that primary key again. It seems to me a artificial view of the way the world works. But I digress. The thing about natural and surrogate keys is obviously both have things in their favor and things that are, you could consider drawbacks. That's not what this video is about. What I'm struggling with is why is it always versus? Why do we always have to have natural versus? It's not a mutually exclusive decision. Let me give you a few examples as to why I think you should simply be happy with a mix. There's no hard and fast rule. Here's an example of a table of genders. And I'm trying to be a modern database designer, so I'm going to allow male, female, unspecified. And I might even specify other or prefer not to say or any kind of value you want to have in there. But I think it's reasonable to assume that you'll be able to come up with a meaningful single character representation that is going to be useful as a primary key and also will convey sufficient meaning such that if people are querying on it using a literal, they're going to be fine as well. Yes, you could argue that more correctly, they should join to this table whenever doing queries. But in reality, people start using shortcuts and they'll quite happily go, yep, yeah, M for male, F for female, etc. I would argue that there is not going to ever become a time where it becomes important to have a meaningless key for this particular lookup table. I think we can assume that we're not going to get more than 26 genders. And I think we can safely assume that we're probably going to be able to limit it to characters which are easy to remember. And it's very unlikely you're going to say, yes, I'm sick and tired of M being our character for male. We need to change it to X. I think we can reasonably assume that's nigh on impossible. This is a perfect candidate for a natural key. Conversely, let's say I've got a customer sales table. Now, if I'm modeling this based on its current real world implementation, it's not uncommon that things like order numbers, invoice numbers, and the like used to wrap around every month, every year, whatever, because they came from plain paper books. So a classical natural key in this example might be, for example, the fiscal month, the batch number, the transaction label, and numerous other columns. Carrying that baggage around in multiple tables probably is just not practical. And in particular, as requirements change, whether it's legislative or regulatory requirements, 
the number of columns may change, the internal values, the internal representations may change, etc. It's a complicated task. This is a absolute no-brainer to have a surrogate key to hide that representation away as much as possible. You may have a unique key that covers those values to make sure you don't get duplicates, but the surrogate key is the perfect one to be carrying around through other tables should it be needed. In simplest terms, this is the slide I put up at a presentation recently on normalization. Be pragmatic. It's not a versus argument. Have natural keys where you think they've suited, have surrogate keys where you think they're suited. Come up with a design that's gonna best let you build applications successfully rather than get stuck into Twitter debates and Twitter wars. That's not gonna be helpful for your applications and not help for the general Oracle community either. Mm -hmm.